Funding for this program is provided by DecoArt of Stanford, Kentucky, manufacturers of liquid acrylic paints. Hello there. Thank you for joining me. We're going to paint a beautiful old mill today. The name of it is Pete's Mill. Uh, the reason I named it Pete's Mill is a real good friend of mine, Pete Smith, took the photograph for me. This mill is in Cedar Town, Georgia, and it's still there, and I'm not sure whether it's still operational or not. But let's get started on the painting. Let's go to the palette, put out a puddle of white paint. You'll notice I'm still using liquid acrylics. I just love them to death. Just so easy to work with. A little bit of ebony black. A little bit of dark chocolate. Now what we're going to do is we're going to... Um, it's a little bit unusual approach that we're taking. We're going to start with the shadows in the mill. Get all of the shadow structure established first. With the dark chocolate, ebony black, thinned just a little bit. Okay, now let's go to the canvas and start laying the shadows in. This is a double roof. I'm gonna wet that so the paint will trickle. Put a little more water in my brush so the paint will sort of trickle downward a little bit. There we go. So that we won't wind up with the harsh, hard edge there. Okay, this is, uh, I don't know if it's an addition or if it's a patchwork or what, but there is um, another section that goes across here. Okay, then this is an extension over in here. This is a long area. And wet the brush a little bit so the paint will trickle. And let it drip downward, a seat downward. Okay, now I've got a little drying time. I can, I can see that that paint is really good and wet, so I'm going to jump down to the underneath the mill and lay the shadows in here. Now these are cast shadows under here. Okay, here is a cast shadow now on the post. There's a kind of a rock post here. This is the cast shadow on that. This is a local shadow here. That's just the space between the, the two posts. This is another post, a post. Let's see now. Let's work around the wheel. the spaces between the wheel. And this way we're saving the drawing of the wheel and we don't have to kind of worry or fret over getting it back in case we lose it. This is a little space behind the wheel, a little shadowed area there. Okay, this is the trough. little shadow here. You can already see the mill, can't you? Once you get your shadow structure established, you can see the shape of the object that you're, you're painting. Okay, now I'm still going to work down in here just a minute. I'm going to add a little water now to my brush and blend these shadows down because you know a shadow is not a solid. It's not solid. It's not opaque. You can actually see through a shadow, so we want to thin it out just a little bit at the bottom. Zip right on back across here and soften these. Okay, now let's add white to that same mixture. That was the dark chocolate. Ebony black. Then your paint. And let's fill in the rest of the mill now. Go a little bit light. I'm going to use a little more white in that mixture. Okay, now we'll go back to the canvas. I'm going to fill in the rest of the mill now. Now 
And I don't know if you can see the tracing or not, but we have windows that I'm just kind of skimming over because I can replace those easily. Isn't that just messy looking? All right, now let's just zip right up into our shadow and let it, let the paint sort of bleed downward now. Let the shadow rather bleed downward. Turn my brush this way so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, now while this is drying, wait, I want to put one little shadow right here. A little bit deeper between the two buildings. There we go. While this is drying, I'm going to check and see if I have all the shadows established, and I believe I do. Yep. Okay, we're going to go back and start on the sky now and let this dry, and then we'll do some more work there. Let's go back to the palette, and we're going to use sapphire blue, cad yellow medium, or just cad yellow. Yes, yeah, cad yellow, which is transparent, and boysenberry. And we're going to fill in the sky, and then we're going to the water and fill it in. Now I want to wet the sky just a little bit, but I'm going to be careful to stay away from that wet mill because wet paint, wet acrylic paint, will bleed or seep into wet acrylic paint. So if this area is wet and this, even if this water touches it, the paint will seep upward. Or if I should fill in the, the sky with paint, you know, wet paint like I'm doing here with the yellow. Got too close to that mill, to the wet areas on the mill. It bleed right out into it. And bleeding is seeping. So I'm going to be ever so careful there. And I'm hardly ever, ever so careful. Okay, now I'm going to add a little bit of boysenberry to my brush and continue upward. Now I can zip across the roof because I didn't wet it. Okay, now this time we have to wash the brush. Sapphire blue and white. We're going to fill in the remainder of the sky. And I like to load with my brush too because I like to pick up a little more color at times so that I get a good variation of color and not uh, a flat look to anything that you're painting with acrylics. Okay, while we're working with that blue, it would be the smartest idea ever just to go ahead and fill in our little span of water down here under the mill. We do want to be smart, so let's do it. I'm using a bristle brush for this. And um, although I wet the sky, I've just continued on with the same brush. A lot of times I fill in the sky with a fan brush. But here I'm using the bristle brush on purpose. The canvas is dry, is dry. And I want the brush to push the paint down in the teeth of the canvas for me. And a soft brush won't do that. Okay, let's go to Midnight Green and Antique Gold. Lay in some background trees while the, the, what, the um, sky is drying and the mill is still drying. They're both still doing their thing. Let's work in another area. Midnight Green 
antique gold, and I'm going to add a touch of Georgia clay to that mixture. Going to start around the mill. Now, the mill is dry enough in this area that I can start laying in these trees. They're sort of just a little, kind of a little help to push the mill forward in the painting. Okay, let's add a few right over in here, and then I'm going to soften those edges just a little bit. Now, this is soft in value because this is going to be background work. We have some real dark trees that are going to hang out over these. Let's just get this kind of blocked in hurriedly here. Push it on over. Okay, now let's ease back across and soften these edges just a little bit. And that sky is still real wet. Can you see the sheen on the paint? So I want to give it a little bit of drying time before I start blending. All right, now let's go back to this side and talk about it just a minute. While we're working with this color, we're going to have reflections in the water, so we might as well go ahead and add them. I'm going to soften it down while the water's still wet. And I am going to add the post in antique gold, Georgia, antique gold, and dark chocolate. A little bit more antique gold. Right on down into the water. We'll just catch all these reflections now. I believe that's the post there. Let's fill it in. Let's give it a... It's one between the two there. And highlight this one a little bit. And then that's a shadow between the two little... There we go. And soften. All right, I believe we can get the roofs on now. Georgia clay, white with a touch of antique gold. Let's see if we can get those laid in. Yeah, it's dry enough. Okay, let's add a little blue to the bottom. Give it an old look. Sapphire blue and white. Okay, let's add some dark chocolate to the top. And notice the strokes. They're angled purposely. All right, let's fill in the trough now. That's going to be a soft gray. Want it a little bit lighter than the building itself. This is the far side of it. It'd be a little bit darker. Okay, 
have a little bit of a highlight here. Little bit of a shadow. Let's add some windows now. Okay, I think we'll put in the wheel. I believe we're dry enough there that we can work in that area. Let's use antique gold, dark chocolate, a little bit of white. And you know what I see? Another little post here. Have a lot that's holding this up, and I think it's kind of piecework. Now this is a rock wall that's holding the wheel. I think they've done a lot of repair. But it's a beautiful old place. It's, it's in Cedar Town, Georgia. And painting this is sort of like a, a puzzle, especially when you're working with the wheel and things of that sort. You just have to kind of piece it together, really. And I think we have done a fantastic job. Let's give the suggestion of rocks now. in this rock wall. A little bit more of a shadow here. We have some shrubbery right over in here. Let's get that added. This is your green, your same green mixture that we used before. And it isn't shrubbery, it's just kind of wild growth. And just sort of stipple it in. Okay, now there's a pretty, pretty old wall here. Let's get it established. Let's use the, the uh, ebony black, dark chocolate, and the white. It's sort of a, gray, a brownish gray. I'm going to wet that. Thin the paint just a little bit with a little more water and let it kind of trickle too. I guess this is a concrete, sort of a concrete wall. edges right on out into the water. And there's a big slab that comes out into the water here. And this is an opening that the water comes through. Of course, it would be darker in the corner. And then it would lighten up as it catches light. While that's drying just a little bit, we can be filling in our side trees. And we're going to use dark chocolate and ebon, uh, I'm sorry, dark chocolate and midnight green. And 
we're going to stipple those trees. And I brush mix, I just kind of um, dip my, my brush into both puddles of paint two or three times. This comes right on down to the, to the wall there. Let it hang over just a little bit. Now I'm going to stop just a minute and use my mop and blend a little bit of this guy real quickly. Believe we got it. Okay, now let's go over to the other side and fill in the greenery here. Comes all the way down across the water here. And here goes the dark one that I told you would overlap the other. It actually overlaps part of the meal. And we're going to stipple, stipple, stipple. I can see this is a little bit crooked here. Just take a minute, see if I can just kind of tidy it up a little bit. Now I'm going to tidy up these edges of these windows a little. Paint's still a little bit wet. But it's working pretty well. Tidy this area up just a tad. Maybe put a little highlight on the wheel. And on the hub. Okay, let me just get out some clean black. I'm getting into the green. I can't. It's too early in the morning to tell the green from the black. I'm going to reinforce these shadows a little bit, and then we got some more work to do on the water. Sort of suggest some boards. Anyway, I see a little spot of white that's left. I was trying to touch it up. Okay, let's go back to the water now. We're going to do something so pretty here. We're going to let some water come out of this, hang out of this. And for that, I'm just using the white. Goes on out into the water. And we need some highlights, don't we? And soften, and we need some water lines against the edge here.
leave some water lines here. Water lines separate your separate your um, separate your object from the water. Let's put a little color in it now. Let's add some interest to this old concrete business here. Make it look old. All right, let's get us a few little water bubbles here and there. Like the water's moving ever so gently. And I want to add a highlight or two in some of this greenery to soften it a little bit. Antique gold is what I'm using there. Okay, let's have a look at it. I think it's I think it's pretty well finished. I've enjoyed being with you. Thank you.